And thanks for staying with us for this election night update. We have team coverage tonight. Jennifer Kovaleski is with Mike Johnston's campaign. Rob Harris is following Kelly Bruff tonight. Amy Wattis is with Lisa Calderon's campaign tonight. And Tony Kovaleski in our studio with analysis of the results coming in. Let's first start with Jennifer Kovaleski at Mike Johnston's campaign. Jen? Ann and Shannon, or Ann and Jessica, you can feel the energy in the room here at the Maven Hotel. This is where Mike Johnson and his supporters are spending election night. And Mike Johnson is actually in the room right now. He just walked in in the last three minutes to loud cheers after those early results just came in. And they're really confident with what those numbers show. I talked to his campaign right after those results did come in. And he, they tell me that they are not going to declare victory at this point. Obviously, it's still very early, but they're feeling very confident with where they are right now. Now, Johnson spent the day out door knocking across the city. In the last 10 days, Johnson says he met with voters in all of Denver's 78 neighborhoods. Johnson's a former state senator and Colorado native. He spent his career in education, working for nonprofits, and in politics. Johnson says homelessness is one of the most important issues facing the city and has plans to tackle it during his first term. We asked Johnson how close he thinks this race could be and if he was worried it could end in a recount. You're stressing me out already. <laughs> I'm hoping for my mom and my kids sake that we'll have some answers tonight, but I don't have any way of knowing. I think there's everything's possible with this many candidates and uh, certainly could be close, certainly could take days, but we're, we're hoping for clear answers, but uh, no way to know. Again, those early results that have come in have a lot of energy in this room, a lot of confidence behind Johnson's campaign that he will be one of those two in the runoff election as we move forward for the next mayor of Denver. Now, interestingly, I talked to his campaign manager earlier today, and he told me that traditionally they'd be looking for 25 percent of the vote to guarantee a spot in that runoff. But with 16 candidates running for mayor in Denver, they were looking more for 21 or 22 percent to really feel confident and with those early results showing 24 percent you can imagine there is a lot of excitement in this room but there is still a lot of votes to be counted as we move forward tonight for now we are live in Denver I'm Jennifer Kowaleski that is true Jen the night is young we want to get to Denver 7's Rob Harris he's live at the watch party now for Kelly Bruff Rob Yeah, and in kind of a similar story here where the party's just sort of started at 7 o'clock. We're seeing her supporters come in and also enjoy food trucks outside and a cookie truck and they got music playing. And we heard them cheering just a few minutes ago as those early results were coming in and showing Kelly Bruff also in that top two spot and as of right now in good shape to make the runoff. They're feeling pretty confident about that. Kelly Bruff, of course, if she were to become mayor, this would become be her first elected office, but it would not be her first time in city council. Uh, excuse me, in the city hall because she served as a legislative analyst for city council. She served as chief of staff for John Hickenlooper when he was mayor, and she also led the Denver Metro Chamber of Commerce. So she's been interacting with Denver city policy for decades. And what I asked her just a few minutes ago is if the process for running for mayor has changed the way that she looks at the city of Denver. I don't think it changed much, you know. Truthfully, I got in because I believe in the resilience of people in our city um, and my commitment to help deliver on it and a different future. And I think, if anything, it restored my faith about what we're capable of doing and that the residents of our city want a different future, too, and they're committed to helping deliver it. So I asked Kelly Bruff how she was feeling about this race. She said that she was feeling optimistic, not only about her future, but the future of the city of Denver. And again, guys, her supporters are feeling confident after those early results came in. Jessica. Thank you, Rob. Denver 7's Amy Wattis joins us live now at Lisa Calderon's watch party. Amy. Yeah, we are at the Town Hall Collaborative here in the Santa Fe Art District, and the party just got started about 45 minutes ago. A lot of excitement here tonight. Now, Lisa Calderon's campaign manager told me they're expecting about 350 to 400 people here. This is a large space. You can see a lot of the folks gathering right now. They had a lot of cheering, a lot of shouting when the election results came onto that screen earlier during the first drop of results tonight showing Lisa in third place at the time but you know Lisa told me she is also here tonight she told me this is going to be a long night she feels like it's going to be a busy long night and she's ready to see 
what happens. Now, this isn't Lisa Calderon's first mayoral race. Now, she ran for mayor back in 2019 and placed third. And because of that, she has campaign experience and name recognition. And I asked her if she thinks that will give her an edge tonight. As you know, I came in third place with very little money, but a lot of heart and a lot of community behind me. So we're just building off of that momentum, and I'm hearing a lot from people who said, you know, I supported you then, I'm going to support you again. So, yes, yes, it's an advantage. Now, Lisa, again, she did tell me she's very excited. She's ready to see uh, what happens. But again, like I mentioned earlier, she feels like this is going to be a long night. So we'll have to wait and see as those results continue to come in throughout the night. And we will be here to bring those to you live. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, Amy Wattis, thank you for that. So again, we are definitely going to a runoff because just given those first numbers that have come in in the race for Denver mayor, as you can see, Mike Johnston in the lead with more than 22,000 votes. That's about 24.5% of the total number of ballots counted so far. You can see Kelly Bruff there with 23%, just over 20,000 votes, followed by Lisa Calderon and Andy Rougeau, the only Republican in the race with 13% right now. So let's bring in once again chief investigative reporter Tony Kowaleski into this conversation. And he joins us live in studio with former mayoral candidate Kwame Spearman. Kwame, obviously a lot to unpack here. You got to know all the other 16 candidates quite well on the campaign trail before you dropped out. Your first reaction to those numbers that came out, they surprised me. Did they surprise you? They did. So, so first off, huge congratulations to the 16 folks who are ending their journey tonight. Two obviously will go on. But yes, it's a huge night for Kelly. It's a huge night for Mike. And they did what they needed to do. If you look at that 60%, we thought it was older, more likely white voters, and coming from east and southeast and Denver. So now the question is, with the remaining votes, are those votes going to be younger and more um, black voters, more Latino voters? If so, Lisa potentially has an opportunity to sneak into second place. Outside of that, though, Tony, with such strong showing from Kelly and Mike, we may already be done on this one. Well, you, you break it down, and as of yesterday, 49% of the ballots were cast by individuals in Denver 65 years or older. When you look at these numbers, and we had talked maybe there could be a six-person race up until late in the night. It's not. It's really two and maybe two others with a challenge. What do the others have to come up with in detail to, to get back into a, a closer race? Because right now, it, you could argue, like you said, it's over. So very tough numbers if your name is not Kelly or Mike right now. Les Lisa, for example, is about 7,000 votes shy of getting into second place, right? So she's got to make up that margin with only 60,000 votes to go, which means she needs to have a four or five to one range over every other candidate to start really making those numbers work for her. And, and then you bring Debbie Ortega, Councilwoman Ortega into it, who traditionally gets votes late from the Upper West Side. That's been her history in, in winning council races. Um, is it doable? Can she get back in this race with only an estimated 60,000 votes less left to count. I believe Debbie's at about 5,000 votes right now, which means she is about 15, 16,000 votes shy of second place, which would mean she needs to get about one out of every three, maybe one out of every four of the remaining total votes, Tony. It's a very, very tough mountain to climb for her. Uh, if anyone can do it, maybe it's Debbie, but I think this is now a three-person race. You've got Mike, you've got Kelly, and the question is, with Lisa, if she can come in. I, I've spoken to her campaign. They believe that amongst the progressive voters, about 50% vote in the final two days. So they believe there are a lot of votes out there. Let's go back to the Elizabeth Epps, Katie March race. Same thing happened. Katie started off incredibly strong. And as the votes kept coming in, Elizabeth kept going higher and higher and higher. She ultimately won that. That's the question tonight. And with Lisa Calderon, remember, she had 33,000 votes four years ago. A total of 185,000 people voted then. We're going to have smaller numbers now, but that's a strong base. It's and if she can, do as you say. And if, if people voted for her today, she could get back in that race. I think that's something you're saying we need to watch. I, I, we need to watch. We also need to watch the sort of perceived center left and progressive split. The fact that a Republican right now is the fourth person in this race shows 
People are not happy with where the city is going with homelessness. They're not happy with where the city is going with crime. And they're speaking out with their votes right now. And you're talking about Andy Rougeau. I am. Who, who has 13% of the ballot. And, and he, you, don't, you don't vote R or D in Denver, but that's a significant number for him. It's significant. You know, uh, Andy would have a better shot if you did not believe that the incoming votes are younger and, and more minority, right? Uh, you have to imagine that a lot of Andy's voters probably have already voted. However, he too is in striking distance, but I think it's a three-person race right now. Kwame Spearman, thanks for the insight. We're going to have a lot more all night long. Very fascinating numbers, Ann and Jessica, as we continue to move forward. Lots to keep watching. Well, we've also just learned that Chris Hansen has just conceded. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me to tell you where he fell in that, on that list, but we know that we have at least one concession tonight already. And we'll hear from him in our next update. That's in about 10 minutes over on Denver 7. So stay with Denver 7 as numbers come in at denver7.com slash election dash results.